the Sunshine Law. The New Jersey Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right to the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted on. Upon the rules of this act, the Trenton Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting by publicizing the date, time, and place, therefore posted within the Central Services Building, 108 North Clayton Avenue, City Clerk's Office, City Hall, and the Times. Anyone whose name is on the mailing list should receive a notice. Formal action will take place at this meeting. Principal Hope Grant and the Trenton Central High School main campus is proud to present the Trenton Chambers High School Orchestra. The orchestra will be directed by Mr. Joseph Bucciati and Mr. Ted Plunkett. They will perform a special arranged medley of Carlos Santana's music in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. Carlos Santana is the famous Mexican-born international musician who was one of the first originators blending American rock music with Latin rhythms and percussion instruments. As you'll see around the, bit of the room tonight, we don't have any artistic displays because today was only the first day of school. So this is the first night we won't have that, but for the public and everyone moving forward, we always have artwork on the side walls as well as a performance. We will have that next time from Washington School. With that, please give a big warm welcome to Trenton Central High School Chambers. <laughs>
And once again, if you couldn't hear because of the, the movement, uh, Council President Chester is our board liaison, and we welcome you to our meeting. And uh, we thank you for being here. And again, normally I don't call up the speakers, but I wanted to just do this so I could probably welcome you to working with us this school year. Thank you, President Chester. Thank you. Um, first of all, I wanted to just introduce myself to the board. Uh, some board members I know, some board members I know uh, better than others. Um, but we do have a liaison to the school district, and um, I was drafted for that, uh, that role. Um, but what we want to do as a council and as a city we want to show that the council is willing to work with the school district, not only the board, but the administration as well, and also the teachers that are here. So anyway, that city council can be helpful to the district and to the teachers, uh, we are here uh, to assist you in those areas that we might be able to assist the district. So I just wanted to introduce myself Zachary Chester, I'm the uh, council president and the liaison to the school district.
and who was the first year vice principal, told my daughter, and he told the student that he sh she should not be around my daughter because she was dangerous. My daughter came home to my husband and I crying, so we had to address that. And I called at that time, who was a liaison over the principals, and we tried to get some type of um, understanding and get some clarification. And then, of course, he didn't say he did anything, but I spoke with the um, family and community engagement <coughs> to see how we can resolve this and move forward. I am not an adversarial person. You all have seen me many times. You've seen my work in the community, and you've seen my stance when I have a difference of opinions. I'm always respectful. I always take a step back, assess the situation, and find out what I could have done differently. There is nothing that I could do differently, nor would I do differently, to ensure that my children receive the education that they should. In light of the issues that we had last year, and I did everything on my end to try to eradicate and form some type of bond, I began to ask for a schedule for my daughter for the 2014-2015 school year in June of 2014. I submitted that request to them, um, who acknowledged my request and said that even though he was leaving, he would leave it in a file for the next principal to handle. I left, he got the information. I did not get a response. I reached out to the uh, Office of Family and Community Engagement. I told her that at that time, I did not require any intercession because surely this would be a simple request that can get handled. I never received a response from the vice I'm president. Gonna ask you, I'm going to ask you not to refer to the staff members. Well, I mean, this is what happened. These are the people that caused me the effect. We understand that. I'm going to ask you at this point not to mention the people. I can mention their titles. Is that correct? Their capacity. Um, respectfully, I have been advised that I can use the names and I'm going to proceed accordingly. I know that's your okay. too. That's okay. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Ms. Dunstall. Uh, I need you not to be Thank out you. there. Yes, Thank you. We have a parent here who wishes to express her concerns. We understand that the task contract, as well as all the union contracts, talk about not having a public criticism. But at this time, we're going to allow the parent to at least express herself without specifying a specific name. Okay, you can proceed. Thank you, Mrs. Smallwood Johnson. I will refer to the person as an administrator in the building. Thank you. You're quite welcome. I never received a response. I had to contact another um, department. I was at some point advised that by, by the administrator that uh, not what he could do, but he started off by telling me what could not be done. As an example, um, now I've lost my train of thought, but there were so many issues that happened. He, he actually told me about my request. I asked for two specific teachers. I would have to go back a little bit further. Last year, after he, the administrative building, made the comment to my daughter, she was called into the office again, and I came up to the office to address the issue. I was told by the administrator of the building as he turned his chair around from his desk, which was on Roll's table, which was in a roll, and he launched into my face and told me, I got to tell you, Mrs. Wilson, nobody here wants to deal with you. There are no teachers in this building that want to deal with you. Every time you come up here and they see you, they go the other way. I asked the administrator in the building if he can kindly refrain from any personal ideas or opinions about me and just focus on my daughter and why we were here. It should be noted that we were in the office not alone, but with the paraprofessional, there was a TEA representative, and there were two security officers, all of which I have rapport with because I have two children who have graduated from the district and actually come back and serve in some type of capacity in the educational field. I turned to them each and I said, have, when you called me, have I not been receptive? One by one, they said, each and every time we call you, we are able to reach you and you respond immediately. The administrator then proceeded to tell me, he didn't care who I called, everybody
everybody knows that I write these big, long letters to the administrator and get administrators and get people in trouble. Well, he should listen to his own advice because he's correct. Any type of way a child is disserviced, including my own, I will respond. So I'm going to end it. I'm not going to go any further. I think my point has been made. There is no way that we should be disrespectful to parents. There is no way that we should believe that a parent will be comfortable leaving their child in a setting where there has not been any good faith that shows someone has their child's best interest at heart. So again, um, I'm giving you all these emails, which all should happen. If you do not, I will forward them to you um, tomorrow. But I'm asking that the administrators at Hedgepeth Williams Middle School be reassessed and that's not the best place for them to be as they, I'm not the only person, I was one of the parents, but there were other people who had horror stories and they were not ones that um, would look good. And in closing, oh, sorry, the administrator at the school building asked me, was this personal? Did I have the same type of concerns? Did I document everything to the principals last year? Well, I'll tell him, this is my binder for all of my children. I have three. One is 25, one is 21, and my last daughter is 14 years old. And this is the binder that I have used to correspond with members of the Trenton Public School District, teachers, guidance counselors, in regards to my children. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker will be Dr. Alexander Nicholas. Hmm? You have three minutes. I'm not going to make three minutes. Um, I'm Dr. Alexander Nicholas, we're going to be speaking about uh, the electronic. Um, I'm here to address an issue with regards to uh, uh, hiring practices. Uh, a few years ago, um, but first of all, I've been with this for 20, almost 22 years. Since substituted up to now. And uh, two years ago, I was letting me know other options to place a discrimination also against the school district. Now, um, I've applied for two, close to 250 positions, interviewed for close to 200, and never got any of the administrative job. I'm pretty overqualified. I have shared the concern with superintendent, everybody, and apparently, you know, I learned that. You know that we, as individuals, sometimes think we can overcome or we can uh, take advantage of individuals because they don't know how to defend themselves. Now, this past summer, there was like 10 openings and I applied for all those jobs. Now, the action has been taken that you come in for interview and I don't make the second cut. Uh, you know, you don't make the second cut. Just interview for the first position, and you go to the first interview round. You don't make the second, uh, you don't make the second cut to move forward. Now, in addition to that, this some of the positions that I applied for was never called for interview. Now, that's an actual retaliation because, because I place a lawsuit against the school district, I'm still in my rights to be promoted. So I am here because somebody has to stand up for what's right. If I didn't place this lawsuit, I don't believe that we would have a Hispanic superintendent. And things have changed. Rosa Parks stood firm because blacks needed to have the right to vote. And we can go on and on and on, and you can sit there and ignore what I'm saying to you, but the reality is that we live in a true experience, and I believe in it in reality. I have a son who's in college right now. I'm very proud of him. He's got a scholarship for athletics and academics. And I have another one who already got a scholarship for high school, academic and for uh, being an athlete. So my concern here tonight is for the board to really look at this current situation. Um, and I'm going to address it in writing as well, but some of the board members are, are new board members. And everybody in the city, everybody knows my situation. And it's not about being respectful. It's not about not doing the job. It's not about not servicing the children because that's what we are called for when we become teachers, when we become administrators. And the reality is that we're here to do what's right. How are we going to teach our kids? How are we going to teach our generation? How are we going to sometimes talk about multicultural change and not address the correct or the right thing? 
So I would, I would forward it to send you a writing probably spot this week. We'll get all the positions, the job that I applied for over the summer, which I, the job that I was not called for. Dr. Alexander, your time is up. Thank you so much. Or Dr. Nicholas. Thank you, Dr. Nicholas. Our next speaker is Naomi Johnson LaFleur. Good evening, interim president Melanchthon, Superintendent Duran, board members, leadership team, and community. This is a new school year, and I'd like to begin it by, by begin by welcoming the new board members um, to Trenton Public Schools and to take part in a district that is moving together, moving forward together. We collaborate and we are here to do what's best for our students. Last week, some of you were at our opening convocations in which you saw that our teachers were ready to get this year started. And today, yesterday, last week, as we walked through the buildings, they were made ready for our students. We can say that the, the buildings are beautiful, classrooms are brightly decorated, and our students were accepted with warmth today. We also have to accept our parents with warmth. And the story that I just heard was a bit troubling. But we're going to move forward. I'm certain that we will address and move forward. As I was making rounds, um, we started with the high school because we know that our high school uh, staff is really making some adjustments. But I don't want us to just focus on the staff from Trent Central High School, Maine. We also had our Daylight Twilight program affected. Please, let's not forget them in the cab holder site. We still have some rooms, some classrooms that need to be prepared over there, and this is not work that our students or our teachers can do. We have to make good on our promise that we would have this site ready for our teachers and our students. And I'm really talking about the culinary arts program as I went in last week. It was not student ready. So I am hoping to see that student ready in a very near future. The other thing that I would like to address is the process, due process. We had, at the end of last school year, several of our teachers who were recommended for increment withholdings. They have a right to a hearing, um, which they did not receive for no fault of their own. And I would also like to um, ask that we will counsel um, <coughs> know what the law says or what case law says in reference to once increment has been vested. We've now passed that deadline. And if you reference Dorian Georgia versus the Board of Education of the City of Richmond, Cumberland County, it may be of some enlightenment because our members are always guaranteed the rate to due process. If we miss the deadline, then we need to have some further conversation. Thank you. Our next person on the list is Capital Hills. Good evening. My name is Dr. Robert Bremstein. I am the Vice President for Capital Care at Capital Health. And we want to tell you about a new program that we're really hoping to partner with the Trenton School Board, particularly the Monument School. 
My administrative director, Beth Mill, uh, is handing out an executive summary about the program, as is Pam Kelly, our director and coordinator of the program, who is handing out to the audience. Um, Capital Help uh, is now a part of a program called DISRIP, which stands for Delivery System Reform and Payment. A uh, federally funded and approved program sponsored through the New Jersey Department of Health is taking hospitals and moving us from our normal comfort zone of providing care within the four walls of the hospital and rather to become a community-based provider of outpatient services and services that meet the needs of our community. To get these dollars, um, we needed to look at what's called our Community Health Needs Assessment, which is a um, a rigorous process we went through in partnership with both the uh, United Way of Marshall County and with the Trenton Health Team, and we identified that in the city of Trenton, pediatric obesity is a significant health care issue identified both by health care providers and by our residents in the city of Trenton. One of the things we determined is that while nationwide, 21% of the youngest children of school age are obese, in the city of Trenton, 49% are obese, and this is an unacceptable uh, number. For that reason, when we were applied for this program, and there were 17 programs to choose from, a capital being the largest provider of pediatric care in the region, and with a history of working in two programs, one called uh, Shape Up New Jersey, the other one Serving Up Health, both <coughs> aimed at reducing the pediatric obesity in the community, we were the only hospital in the state to apply for and receive approval for a program related specifically towards pediatric obesity prevention. We, of course, have renamed it the Pediatric Wellness Program. We think that chronic pediatric obesity is pejorative, and we'd rather take a positive aspect to it. And we have asked and received uh, permission from the Mind School principal and their uh, nurse to participate and partner with them in this program. I'd like to go into a little bit about the uh, program detail and then answer any questions if allowed um, of you. Uh, the program brief is that we have employed uh, two uh, people to work specifically in the school. One is a registered nutritionist who by training herself had been a school teacher prior to going back and becoming a nutritionist. The other is an exercise physiologist, gym teacher. And they will just, for your information, you only have three minutes. Okay, I'll speak faster. Um, we intend to bring the program to the schools in an attempt to uh, work with children to teach them about proper nutrition, uh, to uh, teach them about uh, hygiene, uh, pardon me, exercise, but more importantly, work with their parents to learn healthy eating skills and teach the parents healthy cooking skills, to try and get a family project. We're using novel technology, including uh, iPads and other uh, you know, smart technology to get the students to be involved in this. New time is up. Okay. I have to answer your question, but we are looking towards the approval of this, if that's not is our hope that we will have good outcomes in the first year 
and they will cut grants and expand into other schools. We are a strong partner and leader in the Trent Health team, and we already have commitment from them through the Community Advisory Board to seek grant funds to hopefully expand this program and come back at a later date with a more grand plan. But this is a pilot program now based on funding from the state. Can I do it? You did it. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you.
Your school district merits special recognition for receiving this prestigious award. So again, we are very pleased and honored to receive this award once again from the Association of School Business Officials International. Also very pleased to announce that we received, uh, with our partners from Airmark helping us, we have captured the third place prize in the New Jersey Food for Thought School Breakfast Challenge. We, as the third place winner, we will be receiving a $1,000 grant to purchase more equipment for breakfast in the classroom. Last year, our participation rose 16%. According to the data from the Department of Education and Agriculture, we are now serving many more students for breakfast, and we look forward to continuing on serving even more. So congratulations to everyone, our principals, our teachers, our Airmark partners for making that happen. Update, um, today I was, I was very, very pleased to spend time with uh, one of our principals at our high school, I guess, no, they didn't, I can't say her name, but Principal Grant. Uh, spent the day with her at the high schools to see uh, and all of the staff and the SDA partners who went into putting in so much work. They really went above and beyond preparing our swing space sites for our students. And if you had been at any of our high school swing space sites today, including the Kyle Oliver site, which is the daylight, former, this is our daylight twilight program, you would have seen that it didn't seem like it was day one and that people had never been in these buildings prior. It was phenomenal to see the work that our teachers gave above and beyond all of our administrators and the SDA. And I'm so, let's please give them a big round of applause for their the challenge of making sure that we do what we need to do so that our new high school can be built. Last week, I want to commend our, um, before I do that, I want to welcome also officially three new members of our leadership team who are joining us, joining us in July. This is their very first board meeting. Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Kendra Johnson, if you're there. <laughs> Assistant Superintendent of Special Education, Alexa Ingram. <laughs> and Assistant Superintendent of School Support, Dr. Roy Wilson. <laughs> we welcome them to join in our team as well. And last week, or recently, our Chief Academic Officer, she hit the ground running in many areas, but in one area she took the charge with regards to our high school and has worked to submit four CTE applications to the DOE. We heard from the public, and we, we heard from the public the need to add more to the CTE programming at our high school for the new high school that's being built. Um, and Dr. Johnson working with a team um, and an advisory committee submitted four applications for the new construction. These four applications are an automotive application, certified nursing assistant, electrical, and the fourth is sports medicine. So we look forward to hearing back from the DOE and whether it happens to be approved so that we can approve those in our new plan. And last but not least, um, we want to commend our district-wide marching band because they have been selected to perform on national television the, on American Graduate Day. They will be performing, uh, hosted by Nightline co-anchor Juju Chang from ABC News and be featuring Wes Moore, who is the uh, host on OWN Channel. So we have not only one at the high school in terms of our choir, inspirational choir, where they received first place last year, we now have our district-wide marching band who will be performing on national television and they were chosen for that honor. Along with that, this summer, we had our um, band from the middle school asked to go to the Hamptons by VH1 and perform for many musical celebrities there. 
So we're very, very excited at all the possibilities. We know we have a lot of areas to work on and improve on, but we have many, many things that we are excited in terms of this new beginning. And I look forward to working with all of our partners, from our new board members, our city council partner, uh, President Chester, who's here, our mayor, all of our teachers, and our administrators, and all of the good work that will be done because the urgency of now is upon us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, time for board member comments. Any board member have any comments? I'll, I guess I'll start. I'm sure there's more comments to come, but just the urgency of now really speaks to our overall mission that is all of our students who graduate with the motivation to learn continually, the parents receiving the choice of college or career. And I'm very happy that uh, Dr. Kendra Johnson has submitted, along with, of course, the high school administration, those career and technical education programs, which are very much needed, that ties right into our mission statement, ties right into having a choice of college or career for our students. And it is an urgency of now. We have a lot to do. Last year, our graduation rate, or within, over the last year or two, was hovering around 50%. So we have a lot to do. The urgency of now is very, very important. And also, I just want to make sure that I address also the uh, high school uh, catalog. I thought that was well done and put together well this year for the, all the various high schools, getting the students and the staff and the teachers ready to assist all of our high school students with their coursework, signing up for their various classes, as well as getting ready for, for graduation. Uh, the convocation was excellent. I thought it was well, well attended by all of our um, teachers, administrators, and staff. Of course, by, uh, of course, that Chester was there, and Mayor Eric Jackson, and others, Shirley Turner, and other uh, dignitaries as well. Uh, but I think also one of the, the guest speaker did a great job. And one of the things that I, I, I gleaned from his presentation was he talked about spiritual leadership. He did it in a very tactful way. And I think that if we uh, take some of his points, and one of the points that I gleaned was, was this, was at least give three positive acclamations or proclamations and proclaim to someone, your, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your, your cousin, your next door neighbor, whoever that might be, something very positive. And I did it to my son, I said, you're the best, you're the greatest son ever. And he responded back, you're the greatest dad ever. And you believe, believe it, it made me feel good, it made him feel good. And I want to continue to do that, not just with my family, but with others. And so I want to ask if anybody told you they love you today? If they haven't, I love you. Too much time, but I just want to touch on our mission, the career piece, our college readiness piece with, at the high school, the complication, urgency of now, tying to our mission, um, and also want to welcome the board members, new board members, because it is that mission that you are here to to adhere to, in a sense, in terms of making sure that all of our policies and our funding are going to programs that support our mission and that is graduating our students. There's a host of other things, right? But that's our primary mission. Um, so I welcome you to the board and I look forward to working with you um, going forward. Also, I just want to congratulate the business office for the certificate of excellence. I believe this is perhaps the second year, it's the third year. Third year. Third year running. I mean, that, that is awesome, right? So they have done that applause for our business office. And then also, lastly, um, I want to, I can't really necessarily address this, but I want to make sure that the parent um, who was teached to hear that we take your concern not lightly. I certainly don't, I'm sure my colleagues do not, and I'm sure the superintendent does not in his administration. And so I'm sure that the superintendent along with his cabinet and administration, take that very seriously as us, as we do as board members. We will certainly address uh, any concerns that you have. And please speak to the superintendent, uh, 
leave directly um, so that we can get this, this resolved. I'm sure he will get it resolved. We, we will make sure that you feel comfortable and confident that you are welcome in our schools, that all of our parents are welcome in our schools because is, we are a community. We are a community of parents, of students, of teachers, of support staff. We're a good family. And we love it. So we want to make sure that we, we extend that, extend that to you. All right. Thank you. First of all, I, I want to thank God for giving me the opportunity to serve on the Board of Education. Um, I'm very excited and passionate about uh, this project that um, I was able to get permission from my wife <laughs> to embark on who uh, is present here tonight showing her support. So um, thank you, um, Dina, for helping me and supporting me. Um, I do want to say, too, that um, I walked into a school uh, this afternoon unannounced because I wanted to understand um, and feel what a board member is walking in uh, when, when they walk into a school. What is it that they feel? And what I felt today when I told them that I was a board member is what every parent and everybody who walks into school should feel like. Um, but with that said, I think that we in Trenton, in the school district, we have all the tools and everything that is required for all the children to be successful. We do have it. We, to all the children in the city, continue to work, work hard, and make the sacrifice to all the parents. Um, I ask you to do the same uh, because for the next three years, I will continue to be here and supporting this school district um, and the superintendent. Um, I told uh, the superintendent in private and I will tell him in public, we are here to support him. Um, he's, he starts with an A and um, we're, gonna, we're going to continue to work uh, for him. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I agree with uh, Gerald that we do support our parents. We know that parental involvement is the difference between whether or not our children succeed or not. Um, and I get very upset when parents feel like they weren't welcome. Um, I fought those battles myself when my twins were in middle school where they felt that I wasn't welcome. And the principal tried to have me arrested and thrown out of the building. You know, and I told them, excuse me, but this is my school, not your school. You know, I mean, if you're not even living in this city, it's not your school. But I'm here, and I live here, and my kids go to school here, so this is my school. And don't forget that if it weren't for those parents, you wouldn't have a job. That's the nasty side of me. Um, the, the nice side of me is, is that when we work together, we make an absolutely invincible team. When parents and staff work together, we can do things that are absolutely out of sight. Okay, that's all I have to say. Now we have two presentations. Yes, our, our presentations this evening are with regards to our respondents to our Perspective um, Board Attorney Services, and for the board members, you did receive a, a copy of all of the individuals who um, responded to the proposal, proposal, along with their scores. Tonight, we have two, the top two scores um, from the um, response to the RFP to present to you and ask, when you can ask questions. The first presentation will be by Lester Taylor III, Esquire, from Florida, Berucci, Steinhardt, and Vader, LLC. Please, please come up, Mr. Taylor. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair. Board members, uh, Mr. Superintendent, and your entire cabinet, uh, first, thank you for the opportunity uh, to present our qualifications on behalf of the law firm of Florio Perucci, Stein, Park, and Bader. I am Lester Taylor. Uh, I am the chairperson uh, of the Education Law Department with the firm, I'm a partner at the firm, and also the managing partner of our Rochelle Park office, uh, which has about 12 attorneys in the office. Uh, we have two other offices in New Jersey, one in Phillipsburg, one in Warren County, and one in Cherry Hill as well. Um, before I begin, I'll say this is a very exciting place to be. Uh, sir, I don't know you, but I love you too. Um, I'm sure the energy in, in the room, um, I think it is fantastic um, that you start the school year off um, with this climate, um, this sense of partnership with your, your municipal administration and your school administration. I think that, um, as Madam Chair said, great things can and, and I say will happen in the school district. Um, our law firm has about uh, 45 attorneys. Um, as indicated, I chair the education practice group. We're a full service law firm of uh, representing clients in myriad areas. Uh, public sector, municipal, housing authority, etc. Um, I say that because I think it's relevant uh, to and analogous to our school practice, uh, where I presently represent a number of school districts across the state, uh, inclusive of the Camden City School District, uh, Jersey City, Neptune, uh, Phillipsburg, Willingboro, uh, and a few others. Um, we do that in various capacities general counsel, labor counsel, special education, workers' compensation, uh, litigation. Um, I have I handled cases in all of those areas. Um, presently negotiating contracts in Jersey City. Um, depending on which day of the week you can get asked, the largest district in the state. Um, I have represented clients uh, with state monitors, without state monitors, urban and suburban, um, dealing with issues of race and discrimination, age, student discipline, employee discipline, um, general governance issues, training. Uh, I am, as well as one of my associates, uh, members of the Jersey School Boards Association, associate membership programs for returns. Uh, we are very active in providing training around the state. Uh, both at the school board conference in October, but also throughout the year through county roundtables and other sessions, uh, providing training to attorneys, uh, as well as to school board members and administrators in various areas. Um, I feel as though we are uh, one of the most qualified uh, law firms in the state. I'm honored to have made it to the, the top 
top two um, uh, candidates this evening uh, will be equally uh, and more honored and humbled to be given the opportunity to service uh, this district. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have, um, but I trust that our submission um, meets the criteria uh, for uh, being selected to represent this district. Okay, anybody have any questions for Mr. Taylor?
this is a necessary question, and necessary, appropriate or inappropriate. Um, maybe I should make a statement. Um, I would like our attorney to understand all of our policies and procedures. So if there is an issue um, within our district, right, that our attorney, outside counsel, yes. um, would be versed in our policies and procedures to be able to assist us with with anything that we need assistance with. So what if, do you pride yourself on understanding within your districts that you work within, understanding the overall process and policies and procedures? The law of course, the 18A and the laws. Yes, the answer is yes. Um, you know, oftentimes when an administrator um, or, or a board member uh, calls for the question, uh, the first question I ask is, what's your policy say? Let's look at your policy. Um, fortunately, the majority of policies are pretty uniform across the state of New Jersey. Um, either done by school board association or Strauss Estimate Associates. Um, but again, it is uh, customary to become familiar with the local uh, policies that are in place so they can uh, vary even minimally from district to district. Um, can you tell us why we should choose you over the other firm? Um, well, I happen to know Mr. Lester DeVere uh, very well. Um, I think he's a, a, a constant professional and gentleman. Um, so, and quite frankly, you probably wouldn't find any other lawyers in the state that would say that uh, at an interview. <laughs> but again, uh, we pride ourselves on being uh, excellent attorneys. Um, we service all of our clients to the best of our abilities. Um, our track record is proven, um, both in the education area as well as the general public sector area. Um, you know, we are a very entrepreneurial and growth-oriented firm. Um, as I indicated, you know, we're not comfortable, we're not sitting on our laurels, laurels, laurels excuse me. Um, we have something to prove. Um, that is what we do the best. Um, we would honor the opportunity to work with you. Um, you know, we represent some of the state's largest districts, but also some of the smaller districts, urban and suburban. We have a very diverse experience that will be very complimentary uh, to this division. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good evening. And our next presenter will be Perry, excuse me if I slaughter it, Lauda Buder. Hi, good evening. My name is Perry Lenten Buder. I am a founding partner with Dallas Gutierrez and Lenten Buder in Newark, New Jersey. And I am pleased uh, with this opportunity to uh, present the Board of Education our qualifications to be your board attorneys. Let me tell you a little bit about who I am and who we are, a little bit about who we are not. Uh, if the criteria for selection of your board attorney firm involves name recognition, we don't have it. I cannot compete with a former governor uh, in terms of name recognition uh, or other elected officials. But if this opportunity is about selecting the most qualified, experienced, a committed education law firm in the state of New Jersey to assist your district in moving your goals and programs forward, the scales then start to tip in our favor. I, um, if selected, if our firm is selected, I will be the attorney that will handle all the matters for the Trenton Board of Education. I will be the point person you reach out to, you will have my business phone, you will have my cell phone, you will be able to contact me on a 24 hour a day, seven day a week basis. We pride ourselves in taking calls when our clients need them. We know that many administrators start their day around 7 a.m. where they're taking those calls, where they need to speak to someone. Their issues well run, past, run well past the evening hours and we get calls 8.30, 9 p.m. at night as an administrator principal is trying to sort something out. We are there for those uh, administrators. I am there for those administrators. A little more about me, um, I have almost 17 years representing school districts, and that's just enough to make me the least experienced of our partners. Um, I have so much respect for my competitor, and, uh, Mr. Uh, Lester Taylor, in this. Uh, I know him on a personal level, he's a terrific person, but I want to note that I was an in-house board counsel for the Newark Public School District at the time, Mr. Taylor uh, was just finishing up law school, so we've got a lot more experience to the table. 
my partner, Sherry Adams, uh, does have over 30 years of experience representing school districts um, and statewide recognition as one of the best special education lawyers out there. Uh, and her commitment to education, I think, bears noting, goes beyond what she does as a lawyer for school districts. She spent 15 years serving as a board member in her town in Belmar, New Jersey, 10 of those years as board president of her local board of education. So we, we not only talk the talk, we walk the walk. I, on the other hand, have served almost seven years internally in the Newark Public School District, uh, running their internal legal office, and I can tell you in that almost seven years, I've seen just about every legal issue that a school district could face in that time frame, and a district as large and diverse as that one was a great experience. Uh, my partner, Gerlis Gutierrez, has over 20 years of education experience, 10 of those in-house as the head of human resources for the Pacific School District. So we know school districts inside and out. So when you bring us in as outside counsel, we have experience working with your administrators, experience working with boards, experience working with students and staff in schools. My career as a lawyer began here in 1993 as a deputy attorney general working uh, with the attorney general's office in Trent. In 1998, I began representing school districts in counseling and litigation matters, and then I got the position in 2001 to be an in in-house school district in Newark. In 2008, my partners joined, uh, and I joined together to form this firm, and I can tell you a little bit about uh, an experience I had. Uh, working on a very important matter for the Newark School District that helped form our commitment to what we do. The State Department of Education, which I would refer to as the Lion for purposes of this story, decided one year to arbitrarily take $70 million from the district budget. We wouldn't take this sitting down. We prepared to fight. We prepared administrators for the fight. And after five weeks of hearing, we were able to get $53 million of that amount restored to the district budget, saving offices, jobs, and I can tell you that when you take the life on like that and you're successful, the next four years of negotiating budgets, both early childhood and regular budgets, came relatively easy. They know when you're gonna fight, they know when you have the capacity to fight, and that's what we bring to the table. Since 2008, we've been, at Adams Gutierrez and Jersey, we've been bringing that fight on behalf of school districts around the state. We represent school districts, board of education, public sector clients exclusively. We don't bring cases against any public sector clients. We don't bring any plaintiff's cases at all. We are completely 100% defense firm. We are also an award-winning firm. My partners and I formed this firm together. We were the Education, Labor, and Employment Group at Sills, Thomas & Gross, which is a large regional law firm also out of New York, New Jersey. But why does that matter? Because when we all worked at that firm, we were used to clients paying upwards of four, five, six hundred dollars an hour for our services. What did they expect for that? They expected the highest level of quality work, research, writing, advocacy at the highest state levels. What did we do when we decided to form our firm after leaving that large firm? We essentially do the same thing every day, which is provide big firm work at our public sector rates that we've learned to live with. How's that working out? Based on the diversity in our ownership and how we recruit and employ our quality legal staff this year in March, we were provided the private sector law firm award by the New Jersey Women Lawyers Association. What did they look at in deciding to give us that award? They looked at our groundbreaking philosophy, our distinctive business model, and our commitment to women and minorities in the profession and our community outreach and advocates for women, as advocates for women and minorities. <clears throat> So we got that award, the awards don't mean much. They basically are a barometer to help you understand that you know, you're on track for what you want to do. For the next 20 or 30 years, God willing, we are, we are going to be one of the top firms in this state doing this work. We're currently holding that mantle, and uh, we're continuing to do that. 
plus, besides our 45 clients uh, and boards around the state, uh, who else recognizes that? New Jersey large, largest insurer, the New Jersey School Board's Insurance Group, who in 2009 decided to take advantage of our experience and our knowledge of uh, school districts, and they put us on their roster of attorneys. Since then, we've provided high-level litigation services to over 50 school districts for resolving legal matters based on our knowledge of schools and our knowledge of the law. In terms of that uh, fairness, in terms of our billing practices, you're looking at the person, the buck literally stops here. You're looking at the person who sets the rates for the firm. You're looking at a person who will make sure there's a commitment to no block billing, which I believe was referenced earlier. Uh, we, we, we make sure we specifically get the authorization to do legal work, so we're not out there independently figuring out something on our own and then charging the school district for it. We make sure we stick to the people with whom we are authorized to speak because we know how critical that is to keeping legal fees down. I will point out that in my former capacity as general counsel in the Newark School District, I was charged with reviewing the fees of outside law firms. And I took a great deal of lessons from that in terms of how we structure our practice and how we treat school districts. They deserve the best and they deserve them at a fair rate. The last thing I'd like to address formally is the capacity of our firm. We're up to 19 members, we have 12 lawyers, uh, we have five paralegals. We bring 100% of our time and commitment to education law on behalf of school districts around the state of New Jersey. And Superintendent Duran, I did have the opportunity to look at your urgency of now, and I want to end with pointing out that if part of the superintendent and the school district's priorities is to hold student adults accountable for student success, you have a partner with Adams Gutierrez who had been there to do that. Why? We've dealt with staff issues, uh, and we certainly will make a point of assisting you as a partner in removing substandard staff from their positions and making sure that only the best and brightest get before those children. Uh, in terms of the student environment and classroom environment, if there are disruptive students, we have a myriad of experience with student disciplinary matters that make sure that the kids who are there to learn will learn. So with Adams Gutierrez and Latin here, I feel you're getting uh, the very best, most experienced, qualified educational law firm, and we would be thrilled to be your partners moving forward for the 2014-15 school year. Any questions? Sir, would you please share with the board your experience in teaching other lawyers how to do with you? I'd love to do that. Um, for the uh, past, uh, I'd say, 10 years, we've been a part of the Association Membership of School Attorneys. I've served as president of that organization, and my uh, partner, Sherry Adams, has served as president of that organization. The current president is my partner, Jeremy Gutierrez. What does this allow us to do? We set the training schedules for the New Jersey School Board's convention uh, and the school law forum from that position each year. So we plan a program for the upcoming convention in October, and during that convention, my partners and I present to all the attorneys uh, throughout the state of New Jersey on issues. Uh, last year, it was the, uh, it was the HIP, uh, two years ago, it was the HIP matter. That was the, uh, was the large uh, thing. Last year was the, the new tenure law. We presented to uh, our fellow attorneys around the state on all those issues. We presented on employment discrimination matters. Um, this year, my presentation, a little plug for it, will focus on the issues around acquiring uh, district property for educational use uh, and the purchasing of buildings where necessary. So the the
questions or discussion? I presume, by the way, we get Bill from Newark. Do we not? When they come here. The, the, when council comes from an office, is it North Door Village? We travel. Yeah. I didn't look at the RFP, so I can't speak to that. Um, in some submissions that I've seen in the past, if I go by what was submitted during last year, you were billed to travel. Certainly, even if we, if you select or vote for one of the, if you vote for one of the two um, law firms this evening, you can still case by case decide what you farm out or not farm out. And you can still look at how much is given to an outside counsel. Um, I just want to know, so what has been the trend, have we, um, based on what's been proposed, have we always had outside counsel in conjunction with Mr. Ward? Uh, since 19, 1980, uh, there was both outside counsel and inside counsel. When your Blackburn was inside counsel, then he formed his own firm. And uh, I think at one point, uh, uh, the one who became a judge, Summers, uh, 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 right. And so then when Dr. Venable came here in, 90, in 1992, she had both inside counsel and outside counsel. She had about 10 outside counsel. So we've had a trend for at least over the last 25, 30 years for inside counsel and outside. So what is, what is um, our procedure at this point? Is our procedure at this point to make a motion to select one of the- It's the, board, it's the board's attorney. So the board needs to decide who you want to build up, who you want to build down, if you want to do anything. I'd like to make, make a motion to appoint Adams, Gutierrez, and Newtonberg. I said that correctly. That motion.
would you like to table this for further discussion? Or? I think that probably would be for me. I think it probably would be for me to go into executive session because yeah. we can discuss particular, particular matters that would need to be broken out. Uh, no, it's not. No, I think if we're going to take a session, it's not. No, I think it's not. It is appropriate. It is appropriate. It is appropriate because there are ten matters that our council has advised us that we need to go out. So I think we need to know the nature of those cases, but we can't discuss them out here. It's appropriate for her to tell us in there. And then anything more, we should be more educated on it. Do we know how to do that? I would like to.
for discussion and action on cons the consent agenda. Any questions on the agenda? Meeting adjourned to exactly.